From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine on a Wednesday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 25th season. And uh, this year, as we head toward uh, 2120, uh, we found out that in the last year, uh, over 3 million viewers saw More Sports and Less Levine uh, for that year. Not, not, uh, not bad. I don't believe in stats all the time. I'll, I'll believe in that one, and I'll be really, really happy to take it. 216. 5750403 is the number to call. The D-man Dennis Maniloff is here. D-man, we get uh, closer to D-day, which of course will be Sunday afternoon's D-game, uh, the uh, Cleveland Browns and the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And I started to, to talk to you just before we we got on the air, and that is obviously we would have loved to have the Browns win the game on Sunday and just go right to slide right into the playoffs. But when you think about this, the all the elements involved in this game whether it's Roethlisberger not playing, despite his incredible record against the Browns over the years. Um, are they giving up this game? Um, they're never giving it up, but they're making it uh, much more interesting. You got uh, um, all kinds of stuff going on uh, behind the scenes, and uh, you have uh, uh, Baker Mayfield, uh, who struggled, according to some people, on uh, Sunday afternoon, and the coach, in my opinion, who struggled also, uh, Kevin Stefanski and D-Man, they went six to 15 games this year to get to one position where I can point to and say, you know what, I think the strategy involved here by the, the coach, Kevin Stefanski, might have cost him a game. Where do you stand on that? I, I agree with you. Uh, Kevin Stefanski was part of the problem on Sunday against the Jets in the Meadowlands, 23-16 loss. Uh, he wasn't the only reason they lost. Obviously, personnel shortages. We know the well-documented uh, receivers room blown up by uh, COVID proximity protocols. Two linemen gone. Two linebackers gone for other reasons. So, and you know, B.J. Goodson had the the COVID-related uh, issue. The linebacker. So that was definitely an issue, a, a problem. But Kevin Stefanski, head scratcher. And as you said, Les, really the first time where you felt like Stefanski went off the rails. <laughs> you know, as good of a coach as he has been in his first year as an NFL head coach, the fact that he never really tried to establish the running game. 15 total carries for Chubb and Hunt, 11 for Chubb and 4 for Hunt. 53 passes. Uh, when you don't have your top four receivers, to me is inexcusable. And, and I know that you know, in, in analyzing the Browns' attempted rushes uh, for anything, uh, the analysts have looked at it and seen that there weren't many holes and guys were crashing down for the Jets, you know, the cornerbacks. They weren't respecting the receivers. But you still have to do a better job of trying to find balance. You, you can't tell me that Nick, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt against the New York Jets can't be productive players. So... Stefanski's got some responsibility. Baker Mayfield didn't play well. You even heard Denzel Ward, the cornerback for the Browns, taking responsibility. I'm glad that they all took responsibility for that because it really was a stink bomb. All right. Now, your your statement about uh, uh, Stefanski and uh, not really doing much offensively or on the run anyway, uh, that may very well be, but that was only after four carries on the initial – uh, the initial uh, uh, first down situation. Uh, you can't make a decision about cha blowing up your format or your uh, game plan. Uh, you can't do that after four plays, especially when you should have an advantage. We keep hearing all the, all year how good uh, this running game is. Well, this is the time you show it against a bad uh, against a bad New York Jets team. And I, I just. I just think I, I, I never use the word choke, almost never. I don't say it's a choke job because they kill, still could have won the game, but they, but Stefanski did not put his players in the best position to win a game, uh, especially with all the new wide receivers. They, you're expecting them in game 15 to make plays that uh, some of the other, obviously uh, you got a couple of all pro players on this team. You're expecting them to, to make uh, like a play that OBJ is supposed to make. Or Jarvis Landry supposed to make? No, I take my chances with the running game on that day. If it doesn't work by halftime, by the way, as long as you're within a score, if you're if you're down at halftime, you're not out of the game. You don't have to blow up anything. You just go and play your game. 
Now, if you want to get into the middle of the fourth quarter and you still don't like what you're doing, that's that's a different story. Uh, correct, and, and I know you know thirteen three at half, then twenty to three. Uh, the Jets got up early in the third, so you say, "Well, how much can you run when you're down twenty to three? And, and there's some credence to that. But uh, to your point, the Browns could have stayed in the game if they would have established uh, the rushing attack more and and at least tried to run the ball, which they didn't appear to do. Now we know that the vast majority of Mayfield's targets were to tight ends and running backs. He didn't, uh, or the majority of them. He didn't throw a lot to the wide receivers, but uh, still, you didn't see the quote-unquote extended handoffs, you know, the the leak outs, the, uh, the arrow routes, the screens, the little dink and dunk, which would have taken uh, some of the pressure off Mayfield and some of the pressure off the depleted receiving core if you run, the, you know, maybe the, the quick game. But they didn't do that either. I'm mm. wondering about this, Les. As good as Stefanski has been, and we know he's incredibly intelligent, I wonder if he was he outsmarted himself on Sunday, given that he, he knew that the Jets were going to expect the Browns to run the ball. So he said, well, guess what? I'm going to trick it up, and I'm going to run. I'm going to pass it when you don't think I'm going to pass it. Or... Did he simply say he and the coaching staff that puts together the offensive game plan, including Alex Van Pelt and Bill Callahan, did they get together and say, Baker Mayfield has, is as hot as he's been in his, in, in his three-year career. He's coming off of a stretch of games where he was terrific. Why don't we just ride that hot hand and Baker Mayfield will be able to carry us even if he, does, if he, even if he has no-name receivers? I wonder if that might have been in play, but no matter what the thinking was, it was the wrong thinking, and you can blow it I'm up. glad that Stefanski took responsibility. All right, so let me ask you this, because I know you love good conspiracies, right? I, I, I'm sorry, Les, what? You, you love good conspiracies, right? Yeah. I got a conspiracy on the game. You ready for it? Yes, sir. Somebody told me, and I have not, and I've been searching high and low to find out if it's true or not, or if there's any basis to it at all. Is it possible when they, now remember when Baker on the last quarterback sneak, uh, uh, they did not, uh, they did not get anybody behind Baker to, to push, push the line forward, right? It, it looked like just a straight, straight quarterback sneak. We all know how, what a ferocious competitor he is. Somebody told me that he believes that that was not the play, the quarterback sneak was not the play that was called, and Baker changed the play to take it himself. Agree or disagree that that's a possibility? Um, it's possible, I guess. Uh, and you know that's an interesting observation. I hadn't thought of it. The uh, it certainly wasn't blocked well. That's for sure. Right. And um. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there might be some credence to that. Uh, and the fact that Baker came out after the game and was so definitive, uh, this is on me, you know, I needed to be better. We had everything we needed to win. And maybe he was making sure that he took the blame and, and Stefanski covered for him. That, that's, that's possible. I'll tell you what, I, I don't like... That whole thing that you just mentioned about what Baker said, it's on me. Uh, I think on three occasions, three games this season, uh, Stefanski's done the same thing, and other players have done that. That's, that's a little, that's kind of tiring to hear that all the time in, in that way. Les, here's the thing. We got tired of hearing players and coaches take responsibility when the Browns were on their way to 0-16, <laughs> One and fifteen, three and thirteen, four and twelve. So I can stomach it more when the team is ten and five and the losses are coming a lot less frequently than the victories. But I get your point. I think what happens though is these these athletes they want to convey that they are you know that they are human and that they are feeling culpability. And I think it might make the fan base feel a little better to hear the you know players on their team saying, "Hey, you know, we're to blame here," as opposed to, 
uh, we played great, but we had bad circumstances and we, we didn't deserve our fate because of the COVID protocols. And we, we got a bad call from the referee that cost us a scoop and score. I'd rather have the player and the coach, even if it's cliched, say, I own it, as opposed to the player and the coach making excuses. You said the scoop and score. You're talking about the uh, uh, the the the, uh, the play uh, that was that Zach they didn't Arnold. allow him to, they didn't allow him to move forward with the fumble recovery. The Dave Casper, basically the Dave Casper rule. Well, no, the, the Casper rule was in play. The Holy Roller, I believe, was the one that affected Baker's fumble on the sneak inside of two minutes. And Baker referred to it in his brief post-game uh, virtual presser. He said that under two minutes to go, you can't advance a fumble. Right. So when Hunt caught the ball off the fumble, it, it didn't matter where he went from there. The ball was right. essentially dead. Uh, that, I believe, is the Holy Roller rule, uh, or relates to the Holy Roller rule, traces to it. What I'm talking about, was first half when Sam Darnold uh, had his arm cocked and Miles Garrett hit the arm, popped the ball out, and the Browns could have easily had a scoop and score, but the referee or officials, I don't know how many made the call, maybe just one, ruled, first of all, that it was an incomplete pass, and secondly, obviously, blew the whistle. And to me, in that situation, we've seen it too many times, Les, you got to let that play unfold. And then you go back to replay to change it. You don't blow the play dead because right. you can't unwind the whistle, but you can change the play after you look right. at it on tape. Exactly right. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. The D-man, Dennis Maniloff from WTAM Radio, is, uh, is with us. Um, D-Man, yesterday, uh, and I want to talk about this today, yesterday, Mike Tomlin, coach of uh, Pittsburgh, uh, announced that uh, Ben Roethlisberger will not get the start. In fact, won't play, even if there's an injury, which I thought was interesting. Uh, I want to talk back and forth on that, how you feel about that in general, whether teams should play guys or shouldn't play guys when it doesn't mean anything as far as where they will play in the uh, playoffs. And if it's the right move for for Pittsburgh, and ultimately, will it be the right move that spells the difference and changes this season around for the Cleveland Browns? We'll do that and more when we get back. More sports and less Levine is powered by Cleveland.com. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day about Ohio State football. Inside information, polls, voting, all kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take X subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State tech subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. Tri-C is here for you. Now more than ever, you need a post-secondary education. So I encourage you to start your journey here at Tri-C. The majority of fall classes will take place online, 
but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, Tri-C is where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Welcome back to more sports and Les Sylvine. Les, Dennis, Baker Mayfield had been playing well since the Browns lost to the Steelers earlier in the year, but he stumbled against the Jets, and it's led to national criticism, including that of Pro Bowler Brandon Marshall. Here's what he had to say. When you need Baker Mayfield to win a game for you, he loses a game. If this game came down to interceptions because there were mis mishaps, because there wasn't any continuity between Baker and his tight ends, we can say, okay, that's an issue. But this game down to the guy holding onto the ball, that's disturbing. Once again, in critical moments, Baker Mayfield will lose it for you. If we look back to the last time Baker Mayfield played Pittsburgh, he struggled quite a bit. He had 10 completions, 18 attempts for 119 yards, threw two interceptions, and he was sacked for a season high four times, which actually tied for the most times he's been sacked this season. The other time? last weekend against the Jets. So what do you guys think of Brandon Marshall's comments on Baker Mayfield? He has to face in probably the biggest game of his career this weekend against Pittsburgh. Is he up to the task? Hi, first of all, uh, D-Man, Brandon Marshall's full of stuff. Um, he says every time he put the game in his hands, he loses it. You want to tell me when? What, do you, what game did he lose when they put it in his hands? If you're talking about losing this game against the Jets, when you ask a guy to throw the ball 53 times, you're putting a lot of a lot of responsibility on his plate, and I think it's totally wrong to say he had the opportunity to win it and he didn't do it. That's that's just low-hanging fruit that that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, Brandon Marshall has uh, has not been apparently not been following the scene this year on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, Les, you know I don't I'm not saying that I didn't think that the criticism would be coming after the Jets game because I did think it would. And Marshall's not the only one uh, who sounded off. And, you know, the, I think the critics have been lying in wait <laughs> to get after Mayfield because he's been on such a roll. Uh, the Mayfield critics are like, all right, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. And they got their opportunity to pounce uh, on Sunday when they, the Jets game did not unfold well for the Browns and Baker didn't look good. But, you know, here's all the thing. criticism of Roethlisberger? Counter, what's that, Les? Where's all the criticism about Roethlisberger who cost them several games down the stretch? Well, you know, but Roethlisberger's got a resume and he's got Super Bowls, uh, plural. So I, I get that. But here's, here's what we're dealing with, Les. I look at the five losses, okay? Because you're not going to tell me in his rookie year that he played any really meaningful games. For him, yes. For the team, no. Second year. Uh, yeah, I guess he played a few meaningful games, but the season went off the rails really quickly, and he wasn't all that good anyway. So, I don't know. I'm not worried about that year. This year, though, meaningful football, 10-5. and five, He's the quarterback on a 10-5 and five team, the five losses. He didn't play well at Baltimore. There's no question about it in the opener. He didn't look good, nor did his team. He didn't play well at Pittsburgh. He was abysmal at Pittsburgh. He didn't look good, nor did his team. Lost to the Raiders at home. Really didn't have a chance to do much. Neither he nor Derek Carr, the quarterback for the Raiders, was able to do much because of the weather. Uh, that's one. Of, that's another loss. The loss against the Jets, he didn't play well, but he was missing his top four receivers. The other game, the other big game that turned into a loss was the Ravens at home, and he was lights out. He was tremendous. Now, yes, he threw a pick that almost resulted in a pick six. Might as well have been. But he was really, really, really good in that game. So uh, I'm only pinning 
two to three at the most losses on Baker Mayfield, one at Pitt, one at Baltimore, and uh, one uh, against the Jets. And even pinning it on him for the Jets is a stretch. So if you're going to tell me during the course of a season that a quarterback is only going to be responsible for three losses, I'll sign up for that every single yeah. time. Give me those That's wins he's that. responsible for. What's that, uh, Les? I say give me the wins he's responsible for. I'll take them right. happily. He's helped his team win 10, and he's responsible or largely or partly responsible for three, maybe four if you really want to stretch it. I'll take those odds, okay? Yeah. But here's the key to it. Everything I just said doesn't mean a thing if he doesn't deliver on Sunday because Sunday is easily – the biggest game of his career. I mean, that's the understatement of the year. Yeah. He and the biggest to, what? And the biggest that? game, Cleveland Brown, biggest game for the Cleveland Browns in twenty years. Yeah. So we'll, and you know, Brandon he, Marshall. I think I, I I hope he's wrong. I think he's wrong. Uh, but even if he's not wrong, I think the logic he used is is uh, is uh, is faulty here. But, uh, well, I, you know, so he played better, yeah, but you, you expect – you can't put every win and every loss on a, every quarterback. That's it. Right, and, and we, we, we could talk about how significant uh, the games were down the stretch in 2007 uh, when the Browns lost a couple. They shouldn't have lost and finished 10-6 and six and out of the money. Uh, but when you're sitting here trying to get into the playoffs for your franchise for the first time since 2002, and it, it's all there in front of you, and and you're facing Mason Rudolph, which to me is the ultimate gamesmanship by Mike Tomlin. Because right. Tomlin's looking at this and he's saying, risk reward. I know that if I want to go anywhere in the postseason, I've got to have Ben Roethlisberger. Is it worth the risk for Roethlisberger to potentially get injured in a game where we're not going to move much? Yes, the Steelers could finish in the two seed. But what's the difference between the two seed and the three seed when there's no uh, when there's no buy? All right, and he knows the Bills have the tiebreaker over the Steelers, and they're going to be at home facing the Dolphins. So most likely the Bills are going to win that game, and he's not going to move out of his three seed anyway. Right. Right. Why not send R Rudolph out there? And on top of that, he knows that the Browns know that Roethlisberger owns the Browns. Right. So he says, you know what? I'll run Rudolph out there, and if we beat you with Rudolph, then we really, 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 really own you. We own you We own you twice. All right. Yeah. When we get back, I do want to talk about Tamla's decision, though, whether you, you – a team that struggled and hasn't played well until the last half of their last game. We want to find out if, if you think that's a good move, if you can – kind of separate the Browns from that decision. And uh, we'll come back and do that and more. Dennis Maniloff with us. Our last uh, show, live show of the year, actually. Uh, Dave Bacon will have a show uh, tomorrow night. We'll take a break. We'll talk more about that. More sports and Les Levine continues. And it's powered by Cleveland.com. Shelly, our garage floor is just awful. I know. We really need Nature Stone. Cracks, uneven concrete, it's slippery. I keep telling you, we need Nature Stone. Coach, only Nature Stone solves all those problems. That's why it comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. And Nature Stone is absolutely beautiful and so easy to clean. Schedule today at naturestone.com and get up to half your garage floor free. Hurry, offer ends soon. Herb, Nature Stone fixed every problem in our garage. I told you. It's not just the floor. Wow, wow it's, it's Nature, Nature Stone. Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. 
At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Hey, D-Man, how'd you like that Urban Meyer wanting nature stone? Yeah. You, did yeah, you get there to you see go. It? Did you get to see What's it? What's that? Next yeah. time it runs, make sure you take a look at Urban Meyer uh, saying it's not just the floor. Wow, it's nature stone. Well, speaking of, Les, Herb, a uh, hot name again in the uh, in the coaching hopper, both NFL and uh, uh, college. What's the latest? Where are they talking now? Well, I mean, his name's linked to every big job, you know, in college and then even the so-called little jobs in the NFL. But there's no such thing as a little job in the NFL. When I say that, I mean a bad team. Uh, you think about the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, possibility with, you know, you blow out Doug Marone at the end of the year and you have Trevor Lawrence coming in. Would that be an attractive spot for Urban Meyer. Uh, of course, you know, in college, you're always talking about USC and, and, and some other places. But uh, the Jacksonville job is very interesting because they, they know they're going to get Trevor Lawrence and they've got a lot of cap space and they're young and, of course, they're bad. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to get the number one pick. But, you know, Herb could go down to Florida, go back to, you know, Florida where he was with the Gators and who knows? And maybe here's the thing: Does he ever want to scratch that NFL itch? Because we know a few years ago he was talking about it when he was still at Ohio State. He referenced it. He said, "Oh yeah, you know that's still out there." I wonder if he's crossed that off his list, the NFL, or if he still wants to coach in the NFL. Well, I, I would have thought, and the timing would have worked out a year or two ago. I would have thought, based on where he uh, grew up and his knowledge of uh, Ohio football, I, I would have thought the Browns opening, would, before it was taken by Stefanski, I would have thought the Browns opening was something that he'd kind of put into the uh, in, into the pot there and see what what got stirred. Yeah, and I wonder, though, if, if there was mutual interest. I wonder if the Browns, uh, at least the front office, maybe the ownership, had, the Haslams were, were interested in her because if her... You know, if Herb checks in with you, you take the call or you answer the email. I wonder if the front office, though, was as bullish on Herb as maybe we were or we are. Uh, but to me, he's also got to look at his health situation and he has to look at how comfortable and how good he has been in this Fox studio role for college football. He's really good at it. And he's making, I would assume, a couple million at least to do that. Does he want to give that up? Because think about the professional equivalent, Les, the NFL equivalent, Bill Cowher. Remember how Bill Cowher was a hot name year after year after year? Well, eventually, Bill Cowher got so comfortable in that role with the CBS uh, pre- and post-game crew as a studio analyst, and he's making Boku bucks, and he's saying to himself, why do I have to change this lifestyle? Why would I want to do that to get back into the NFL? So he's perfectly content as an analyst. I wonder if that's going to happen with Herb sooner than later where he goes, this is really a great life. I'm not stressed out every day and I'm getting paid handsomely and I'm good at what I do. Why change? And you know what? He should take a look at Bill Belichick. Belichick looks like a beaten man right now especially after the way his team played the, the other night against Buffalo. And, you know, no matter how many Super Bowls you win or how many great games you, you have or great players you've developed, eventually you're going to get kicked in the pants on the way down. And I'm not sure that Herb can take, enjoys very much taking the, uh, the downside of uh, programs that don't work in, right from the beginning. Yeah, and that's another factor, too. Even if you were to scratch the itch for the NFL, go to a, the the Jacksonville Jaguars. Does he does he really want to 
go through a rebuild because even with Lawrence, you can't guarantee it's going right. to be an instantaneous turnaround. So and you, there's and a lot of things he has to weigh, but his name will be out there as long as he allows it to be. You just wonder how much his resume is, how, how much importance he puts on his resume and what he's done so far rather than put your name out there with a program that may not may or may not take a while to, to get going. Uh, Dennis Mandeloff is with us. Um, D-Man, I just wanted to thank you if I don't do it before this being our last show of the year. Uh, just thank you for uh, all you've done for uh, making the show. I don't know if you heard me say that uh, in the past year, 21 in 2020, uh, we had uh, 3 million viewers of More Sports and Less Levine, and you're certainly a big reason, one of the big reasons why, and I just want to thank you for it. I appreciate but all the thanks goes to you. I, I wouldn't have this opportunity without you. You believed in me years, decades ago as a guest, and I, I'm forever grateful. Thank you, D-Man. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. We're going to talk about the Browns running game, see if they can uh, re get it uh, up and running again. They're going to need it if they're going to beat Pittsburgh on Sunday. More sports and less Levine continues right here, uh, and it's powered by Cleveland.com. We're living in uncertain times, but you don't have to put your future on hold. At Tri-C, you can move ahead while staying safe and saving money. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs. And we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, check out Tri-C's programs and resources because Tri-C is where futures begin. Well, hello everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get texts sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week and it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash Browns, the blue banner at the top of the page, or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. Three nine six five. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at SmileyOne.com. Hey, uh, D-Man, we got a, something coming up on Sunday that we haven't had to worry about before, and that is how will uh, Kevin Stefanski, how will he respond to the criticism that he's received. This is almost universal criticism for this one game, and it's um, you, you almost hope he can put it in a, in a package and throw it out the window and start again. But this has to, he's got to be thinking of this also. But he cannot draw up a plan that has 53 passes. Right, and unless, I don't know the exact uh, numbers, but I know they're horrible. When Baker Mayfield throws 40-plus times, the Browns just don't have success. I, I think they only have one victory when he attempts 40 or more passes in his career. So well, you're uh, there needs much. to be the you're, you're losing that game already when you're throwing that much. 
Yeah, that's true. And, and and here's the thing, too, about Pittsburgh. They're going to have Mason Rudolph, which helps the Browns. There's no question about it, okay? But it doesn't guarantee them anything because Pittsburgh's defense will still be viable. It's still going to be blitzing. It's still going to be causing their havoc, you know, at the point of attack. Mayfield is going to have to play well in order for the Browns to win. And he's also going to need Kevin Stefanski to keep his cool and not deviate from the plan. Um, yeah, he, he you, you want him to adjust if he sees something glaring, but you don't want him to deviate from the plan. Because I, I just don't think against the Jets, there's no way you're going to convince me that the game plan was to throw even 35 times, let alone right. 53 times. So in this case with the Steelers, you 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 go you go with your game plan, you stick to it as long as you possibly can, and you don't panic. And I'm willing to give Kevin Stefanski a mulligan, all right? But here's the deal, Les. If he if he loses on Sunday, I I can't look at ten and six and say, well, the Browns made a lot of progress and it was a successful season because they won double-digit games. Right. All I'm going to remember about 2020 is that you lost your last two games to fall out of the playoffs. That's it. You, I don't care about 10-6 and six if they lose. No, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you think about it. Um, Nobody's going to say, well, if you told me at the beginning of the season that they'd be 10 and 6, you'd be happy. That, that oh, wait a minute, Les. That doesn't I don't work. mean to interrupt. I don't mean to interrupt, Les. Some people will. Some people will say, hey, what did you expect? This team was coming from 6 and 10, and, and Kevin Stefanski was in his first year. I, I'm not going to care, and I know you won't, and Brian won't, and the research staff won't at More Sports and Les Levine, but some people will. Unfortunately, that's going to be the the solace. Oh, they they far ex exceeded expectations at ten and six. Well, yeah. no, not if you lost the last two and missed the playoffs. Expectations get to change when you get out to a start like uh, to a uh, uh, a lead like that, and uh, you're placed in the standings. You throw out the first eight games. You 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 start from where you're at, and that's what you start grading it on. Let me ask you the most important question of all as we lead up to Sunday. What color uniforms would you suggest that the Browns uh, game day people uh, will put on? Because you know how important that is. I vote for the the white pants and the dark and the uh, seal brown shirts. I'm going to stay consistent with what I always say, Les, on this show. Is I don't care if they wear pajamas as long <laughs> as they win. Okay, but to your point, and, and there's validity to the question because. Players do care. They do, especially in the NFL. They want to look good when they go out there. So whatever the, the Browns players decide is the best look for them, I'll buy it. But all I care about is a W at the end of three-plus hours at the, on the lakefront. Okay, I want the Steelers to be wearing their yellow shirts. I don't want them wearing their dark shirts. They look meaner in the dark shirts. So let's let's force them in. Let's make an offensive. What about the bumblebee uniforms, Les? If you could force them to do that, I would do that. Oh, uh, those are nice. For the Browns, the Browns. If you have a uh, throwback day, it's this. It's the same uniforms as today. You go. Let's wear the 60, 1964 uniforms. We wear them when we're at home. So we'll see. But that that's an important decision maker. Most important decision somebody's going to have to make uh, deciding what uh, what uh, to to uh, to wear on Sunday afternoon. Um, this is a time I feel bad. I feel great for the Browns fans getting this opportunity. I said it the other day that you, you take a look at the Browns team and all of the bad things that have happened, even in even in other sports, the, the drive, the fumble, all, all that, you know, Red Right 88. This time, there's one difference, and that is the Browns or the team involved actually gets, gets a mulligan, as you suggested in the last segment. They get another chance. You can. It's not like Red Right 88. It's not like the fumble or the drive. This is like, okay, we had the drive, we had the fumble, but guess what? You get one more chance to overdo that and uh, 
see what you can do with the opportunity. So that's how I look at this. I, I try not to look at it as uh, too much on the downside of what happened last week. Uh, I'm, I'm saying you get one more chance. The football gods are giving that to you. Now go out and take advantage of it. Right, and if Kevin Stefanski is as good of a coach as we think he is already in one year, he will have flushed the the, the disaster in the Meadowlands by now. Uh, he, you know, that's long in the rearview mirror. Forget about it. Get his players to turn the page. Focus on Pittsburgh, and no one, no one will care about what happened against the Jets if you beat the Steelers. And Here's the incredible part about it. And, of course, you don't want this to happen if you're a Browns fan, if you like the Browns like I do. But even if they lose, they still have a chance to get bailed out. It's very remote, but they have a chance to get bailed would, out. So, you know, they have give, they've been given a new opportunity, and hopefully they seize it by beating the Steelers. I, I'm going to not even look at the scoreboard on for those other games because I don't really care. Just go out and beat Pittsburgh like you're supposed to and go ahead. Here's well, the problem. Unless, unless. Here's go the ahead. thing. If you're the Browns and you have the final game of the season against your one of your rivals, even though the Steelers would say since 99 it's not a rivalry because we beat you all the time, but against the division opponent, when the division opponent is running out a second-string quarterback, you're at home. You don't deserve to go to the playoffs if you lose that game. Great point. Great point. I just wanted to say that they'll have that opportunity, but all the thing, think of all the differences that will take place at the beginning of next year if they don't pull off the win versus if they do pull off the win. You're going to see, you're going to see some decisions made on players that might not have been made uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. So we'll see. It's going to be in a long, 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 long off season if the uh, Browns don't cash in on Sunday afternoon. Let's take a break. We're going to come back with Dennis Maniloff. More sports and less Levine is powered by Cleveland.com. Shelly, we really need to get Nature Stone in our basement. I know, Herb, and it would look great in our laundry room, too. Coach, only Nature Stone is perfect for your basement and laundry room because it never needs replaced like damp carpet and moldy tile. That's why it comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. And Nature Stone is absolutely beautiful and so easy to clean. Schedule today at naturestone.com and get up to half your basement or laundry room floor free. Hurry, offer ends soon. Shelly, Nature Stone is perfect for our laundry room and basement. I told you. It's not just the floor. Wow, wow, it's, it's Nature, Nature Stone. Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the original mattress factory. Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Browns and Steelers, not the only big game uh, around here. Uh, coming up over the weekend, you've got Ohio State back, and they got some good news uh, the other day. D-man is uh, Chris Olave, the fine wide receiver. Apparently, he's going to be eligible, and they certainly can use him. Yeah, the, Ohio State's going to need all the help they can get, or it can get, because uh, Clemson is is a heck of an opponent, and Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne and the gang are going to be locked and loaded. Dabo, the <laughs> 
the most humble head coach in the history of college football. <laughs> Coastal, the, is, Mr. as good as Coastal Carolina. Yeah. And, and, you know, the Dabo, he, he didn't double down on that in a subsequent interview recently with ESPN, but he didn't walk it back either. He said, <laughs> you know what, I think the top ten – in a poll is a is a big honor, and I don't want to give Ohio State that honor because they only played the six games. And it's like, right. you know what? I, here's the thing about Dabble. He is extremely comfortable in his own skin, and more importantly, yeah. extremely comfortable in his own team's skin. Yeah. He believes that no matter what he says, no matter how much the Ohio State puts on the bulletin board or the smartphone or the tablet, he's going to beat them by 20 anyway, so it doesn't make any difference. And you could make room on the next bulletin board if you want to do that. Yeah. Uh, who do you like in that game? I mean, listen, I, you know me, Les, I, I bleed scarlet and gray even though I went to Northwestern. Uh, I'm Ohio born and bred, but I'm also a realist. Clemson is nasty. They are battle tested. They own the Bucky, the Buckeyes right now. What is it, four and zero uh, lifetime, including uh, three in the playoffs, two in the uh, CFP. They dominated Herb a few years ago, humiliating them with a shutout. They yes, they were fortunate to win uh, last year. I think because they got some favorable calls, but Clemson is the better team in my opinion. I hope I'm wrong, but I think Clemson wins this game going away. Yeah, and it, it goes all the way back. The Ohio State has not beaten uh, Clemson. It goes back to Charlie Bauman and uh, Woody Hayes. So that that there is some rivalry material there, although they haven't played all that much. Um, so that'll be on uh, Saturday night, and the winner uh, will the winner will take on the winner. Of, of uh, Notre Dame and oh, Alabama. Wait, I got that Friday night. Less, isn't that Friday I'm night? I'm just going with the what I've been doing. I've been on a roll. I've had that that I haven't been able to fixate that date and that night. Maybe, hopefully, uh, Clemson will have the wrong date in their minds also. Yeah, it's Friday night, I right. think. Um, so Dennis Manilov doing a great job as always. Uh, uh, one thing about it, I, I'm I'm a Heisman voter, and I'm a, I'm allowed to say that. I'm not allowed to, to say who I voted for until that's actually announced by the Heisman people. And, but I can tell you this, it, uh, it, it was not the guy I had in mind at the beginning of the, show, at the, beginning of the season, that's for sure. So that, that changed, a couple, couple new names uh, popped up and uh, one name that, that's been there for a while, he's probably not the favorite. I'm talking about uh, yeah. Lawrence. Yeah, you dropped some hints there. Uh, you kept it vague, which is very smart of you. Um, yeah, I mean, Lawrence, he had a really good year, but he did have to sit for a couple because of COVID. And Justin Fields was looking good, but I, I don't know that he played enough games, and he didn't look particularly sharp uh, against Northwestern. And he had, you know, some teetering in, in a, it was Indiana. But yeah. – um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how you and the, the rest of uh, the voters do when it comes to the Heisman. I'll say this. The Heisman, we know this, Les, does not automatically translate to NFL success. Well, that was what I was going to ask. What, what do you, how do you project? Uh, to me, Lawrence it looks like he's, he's a pro prospect all the way. I'm not so sure about Fields. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I was really in love with Fields early in the season coming off of last year, and I was like, man, this guy's made a tremendous amount of strides. But then you start to hear and read some of the critiques and how he holds on to the ball too long and he's not sure of himself back there. And yes, he gives you the dual threat, but there were, you know, there were some some dings there that I didn't anticipate. Uh, and I saw a, what I thought were warts in his game, so the complete prospect, the the generational prospect, perhaps, is Trevor Lawrence. Uh, I think people have put uh, Zach Wilson, the quarterback of BYU, ahead of Justin Fields in, in certain circles. So uh, we'll see about that. But uh, Lawrence, to me, is the is is the guarantee. Well, I, you would think, and 
uh, Fields, you know, you say he's he's a triple threat or whatever. He's surprisingly non-athletic for a guy with with that kind of ability, but but he's smart. He's real smart. Uh, he knows where to look, and he's and he's got a great arm. But we'll see how that uh, does translate. It'll be interesting to watch that. D man, we're going to come back one more time. We'll make some predictions. What the heck? Why not? They can't hold us to it. We'll take a break. We'll come on back one more time. Dennis Maniloff with me on more sports and less Levine, which is uh, covered by our friends at Cleveland.com. Shelly, our garage floor is just awful. I know. We really need Nature Stone. Cracks, uneven concrete, it's slippery. I keep telling you, we need Nature Stone. Coach, only Nature Stone solves all those problems. That's why it comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. And Nature Stone is absolutely beautiful and so easy to clean. Schedule today at naturestone.com and get up to half your garage floor free. Hurry, offer ends soon. Herb, Nature Stone fixed every problem in our garage. I told you. It's not just a floor. Wow, Wow, it's it's Nature Nature Stone. Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. D-Man, we waited till the uh, last week of the year to get the best commercial of the year, Urban Meyer doing Nature Stone. Wow, it's Nature Stone. All right, tomorrow night, the weekend winter edition, the year in review. Dan Lobby will uh, join Chris Fedor and uh, Joey Noga, and uh, that'll be with Dave Bacon. Cavaliers off to a great start, no question about that, and I'm sure that Chris uh, Fedor will be talking about it. All right, D-Man, you already said that you look for um, not a close game with... Uh, uh, Ohio State not being able to beat uh, uh, to beat uh, uh, Clemson. Clemson. Pains me to say it. Yeah. All right. Tell me what you think about this weekend, Sunday afternoon, one o'clock. Ohio State will watch as uh, Cleveland Browns take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I like the Browns' chances. They should be favored because they are facing Mason Rudolph. Um, but I have an, uh, an immense amount of respect for the Steelers. I'm, I have to hold my nose when I do it because I don't <laughs> like them. But um, it's going to be close, and uh, we will see. I, I'm going to say the Browns pull it out in the end. I, I don't want to be accused of dumping on Ohio State and the Browns in the same weekend. The so, same weekend. Uh, yeah. Well, and by yeah. the way, Les, Les, let me say this. Very important to stipulate. When I say the Browns are going to pull it out, I hope that the game does not come down to Cody Parkey. All right? If they pull it out, I hope it's a 50-yard touchdown pass with one right. second left that gives oh. them a five-point lead. Hey, I'll tell you what. This is where I feel bad for Browns fans, that they've waited so long. It's been, uh, you know, the, the Browns came back in 1999. Um and certainly for the last 20-some years has uh, struggled, to say the least. I'd l- it, I would love to have 70,000 people at that game cheering them on against Balt- against uh, Pittsburgh, which would be phenomenal. But even the fact that you'll have 12,000, I think, is going to be nice. It's going to be as loud as anything we've seen, we've heard in a long time, and it's going to be fun down there. And I just wish we could have 65, 70,000 people there to watch the Browns with a, with a win on Sunday afternoon. I totally agree, but unfortunately we can't. Yeah. All right. Again, uh, great job for you, to to you 
all season long, D man. We uh, had all the problems with the uh, with the pandemic and everything else, and you know, not knowing if games were going to be played. And you you helped uh, get this thing going and keeping it going. And we appreciate everything you did. Can't wait to add another year next year. Happy I can't year wait to get family. Yeah, I'm so thankful to you and the staff, Brian and everybody at Classic. I can't wait to get back into the physical studio at Classic Teleproductions. But for now, you know, we deal with what we have to deal with. Well, you won't like it if it's snowing and you have a longer drive to go, but we'll we'll take whatever they give us. Uh, that Fair brings enough. us to uh, Mike Bacon, all the great work he's done for us to keep this thing going. Brian Welsh, uh, Walsh, rather, in the back room, uh, doing a lot of things you don't, you as viewers don't see, but I, as the host of this thing, really appreciate all that uh, everybody has done. We appreciate that very much. We'll see you, uh, well, I'll see you next Monday night. Hopefully we have a Browns win to talk about and a playoff game coming up the following weekend. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.